No matter how many times I try, I fall short. I cannot carry this burden. It is too much for me. I can't, I can't, I can't. As we've watched the events of the last few weeks, many of us might relate to the enormity of the task upon us. But these words were not said by a contemporary. They predate our recent struggles, and even the struggles of a few generations ago. The first words I shared, I cannot do this alone, this is far too heavy for me. These words, lo uchal anochi levadi, ki kaved mimeni. These are the words of our teacher Moses in Numbers chapter 11, verse 14. Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest prophet who ever lived, speaking to God in this week's Torah portion, Baha'alotcha. This is not the first time we have heard Moses share his desire to be unburdened by his leadership. In the book of Exodus, when he is first approached by God for the great task of serving as intermediary between God and Pharaoh in order to free the Israelites from bondage, Moses' self-doubt rears its head. He asks God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and free the Israelites from Egypt? And God says, I'm paraphrasing, I hear you, and I will be with you. Moses continues, But when I tell the Israelites, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they say, well, what's this God's name? What do I say? I don't know what to say. God says, My name is, I will be who I will be. I hear you, Moses. I will be with you. Moses then speaks up again. What if the Israelites don't trust me and won't follow me? God shows Moses, I hear you. I'll be with you. Moses protests, please, I've never been good with words, either in times past or now. God says, I hear you. I will be with you. And so is Aaron, your brother. He's here to help. He will be your voice. It's after this long scene of back and forth, nearly an entire chapter in the Torah, an inordinate amount of real estate in our sacred scroll, that Moses accepts his appointment and gets to work. No matter Moses' indisputable achievements, like succeeding in being God's agent to Pharaoh, leading to the release of the Israelites from slavery, or marching that same people to Mount Sinai to receive Torah, or simply keeping hundreds of thousands of people alive through their journeying in the desert, he continuously battles with his own insecurity, his feeling of, who am I? So what drove him to his breaking point this time? What is it that led him to utter the words I started this with? Lo uchal anochi levadi, ki kaved mimeni. I cannot do this alone. This is far too heavy for me. Hearing the Israelites complain yet again is what did it. This time about manna, the divine substance that supported their very existence in the years of their wandering. In rereading the Parsha this week, though, I see Moses' reaction differently. Previously, I assumed that Moses' breakdown was because he was sick and tired of this ungrateful, spoiled, and visionless people. They could not see the big picture. That was a judgment on my part of the Israelites. And I'm not alone. Many of our ancient commentators thought the same. It was unfair judgment, having not been in their shoes. How disgusting, I thought. How, how is it that they can't appreciate what they had? Why must they lament over what they lack? How could they be complaining? They are free. But maybe one of the lessons of these past few weeks is that when people say they are hurting, that they are suffering, our response needs to be one not of evaluation, but one of belief, as if to say, I hear you, I'm with you. Again, in rereading this portion this week, I saw Moses as a leader worn down to the bone, pleading with God because he's suffering. He believes the people's suffering. He validates their suffering. He is suffering because his people are suffering. He takes on all of their pain. He becomes overwhelmed by the feeling of helplessness. Moses hears the people weeping, each tribe in their camp. The cacophony of pain incapacitates him. So he goes to God. Lo uchal anochi levadi, ki kaved mimeni. I cannot do this alone. This is far too heavy for me. 
Watch the news, scroll through your Facebook feed, read the paper, and it's easy to relate to Moses' words. Lo uchal anochi levadi ki kaved mimeni. I cannot do this alone. This is far too heavy for me. It is easy, like Moses, to become overwhelmed, incapacitated, and to feel like you as one person cannot move another person's heart from hatred to love, let alone destroy the centuries-old structures we inherited and contributed to upholding. Like every time before, when Moses expressed doubt, God responded, I hear you. I am with you. Our black brothers and sisters are weeping and it is our turn long overdue to say, I hear you and I am with you. Sometimes we may be tempted to throw our hands up in the air as if to say, what can I do? Who am I? Rabbi Joel Simons offers the following in response to that sense of despair. Find your place in this moment, he says. Some of us are wearing masks and marching in the streets. Some of us are confined to the home and making phone calls for reform and change. He continues, some of us are ordering books and educating our children. Some of us are donating money and some of us are donating time. Some of us are reposting because education and awareness is how we change. And soon, some of us become all of us, committed to dismantling the system of racism. So settle in, he says, because we are not letting up until we see change. So find your place and commit to this moment. We got work to do. I hear you, and I am with you. We got work to do. Find your place in this moment. Most of you have heard the story of Nakshon Ben Aminadav, the brave soul who we are told from rabbinic tradition took the first step into the Red Sea after Moses lifted his staff and nothing happened. As the Israelites heard the galloping horses closing in on them, the story goes that Nakshon took the first step and only then, only when he had the bravery to take the first step, did the sea part. It is a powerful story. However, like much in our tradition, there's an alternative story to this one. A story that says it was not Nakshon taking the first step that led to the sea's parting. It took instead the first step of every Israelite there at the shore, taking that first step in, into the sea, for the sea to open and for the path of freedom to reveal itself. We are beyond counting on a Nakshon. We are beyond waiting for a Moses. For that sea to part, it is going to take every single one of our voices joined together in the fight for justice. Find your place in this moment. Instead of lo uchala nochi levadi, ki kaved mimeni, I cannot carry this burden, it is too much for me. Let us say another familiar line from Jewish tradition, from Pirkei Avot. Lo alecha hamlecha ligmor, velo ata ben chorin lihivatel mimena. It is not incumbent upon you to complete the work, but neither are you at liberty to desist from it. We've got work to do. The task may seem impossible, but as Moses needed reminding time and time again, I want to say to you all, I hear you and I am with you. You don't need to be Moses. You don't need to be Nakshon. We need you to be you. We need you to find your place in this moment. We will not say we cannot carry this burden alone, but rather we will bear this burden together. And if you listen to God's still small voice inside you, you will hear the message God was telling Moses all along. You have a voice. Your voice is powerful. Your voice can change the world.